Okay, we are going to uh, be thinking about um, intergenerational community. And um, I believe that is the session that you are expecting. Because if it isn't, we're in trouble. Um, I'm Gail Adcock, and I uh, work for the Methodist Church as Family Ministry Development Officer. And I have a fabulous job in terms of uh, working nationally with the Connectional Team, uh, getting to uh, travel around the country, uh, meeting with people in uh, lay ministry, talking to them about what they do, and uh, generally tr uh, sort of working my hardest to advocate for families and uh, for ministry with them. And uh, recently, over the past couple of years, uh, particularly, we've really noticed a shift into talking about working with different generations. And I don't know if that would be the, the case where you are, but there is a sort of a, a desire to rediscover some of this stuff. So uh, it feels very, very timely. Uh, as we get started, a quick task for you, just with a, a couple of people near you. I want you to count, this will sound a bit random, but bear with me, um, count how many parts of your body you need to use to tie your shoelaces. Go. Okay, and stop. We've only got 20 minutes. I can't give you too long to do it. Okay, uh, jump up if you thought less than five. <laughs> Very confident now. Uh, five to ten? Yeah, five to ten down here. Okay, okay. Uh, over ten? Over ten at the back. Gentlemen, would you like... I'm kind of going to do that National Lottery game thing of, like, name them. What do you think? So we went with, with four fingers and also two wrists, so that makes six. Okay, yes. And then <laughs> eyes. Eyes. Uh, you probably need to bend over to do it, so you've got to use you just your hold of your back. Which yeah. has lots of parts of the body. <laughs> yeah. any, any, uh, any others that we say? Brain, balance, 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 um, I think that um, that whole task of thinking about how many parts of our body, we put shoes on our feet, but actually it requires a lot of the other parts of our body to be working in conjunction with one another for that task to happen. And it points me to this verse or this passage in Corinthians that says, yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? If your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honoured, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. Now, if we be, move beyond the, the, the phrase that says this makes for harmony among all its members, which, you know, varying times is true, but um, there's, there's a whole lot of, of truth in this in terms of recognising that God has created his body, the church, to be what he wants it to be. That was intentional on God's part, that he brought us together in that way. And as much as church can sometimes perhaps feel a bit dysfunctional, um, actually, there is so much in there that God has brought together, which is how he wants us to be. He wants us to be a diverse group of people. He wants us to be different ages, cultures, backgrounds. God sees richness in us being a variety of different kinds of people. And in God's design, difference is good. And there is something great about bringing us all together. There is something which gives us strength as community, and it also gives us a hopefulness. But spending time together, actually mixing those generations, is not a straightforward or simple thing. 
it's very important, but the opportunities for it seem to be fewer and fewer. And if we'd have time, I, I know that most of you are in, sort of involved in children and youth work, but sometimes if, if we were to look at some of the members of our congregation and ask them, when was the last time you chatted to someone from a different generation, I think probably some of us would count that on one hand, because actually we don't do much of that anymore. Society, the way that we live our lives has changed, so that actually we don't tend to live in sort of multi-generational ways anymore. It's not something that we do. Extended families often used to live very close to one another. Uh, my uh, nan uh, lived on the street where, uh, so she grew up with her parents and her siblings in one house. Her aunties and uncles lived a few doors down. Uh, when she got married, uh, she and my granddad uh, moved literally about 10 doors away into a house. Uh, the furthest they ever moved was about half a mile from that place. And the whole of sort of my, my mum's family lived pretty much on that road, were constantly in and out of one another's houses, spent time with cousins. Um, that sense of relationship, I have, um, I have no first cousins, but all my other cousins, some of them are in Northern Ireland, some of them are down in Cornwall. We don't spend time together as family anymore. That sense of extended family is a very, very different experience for people today. We don't mix <coughs> in the same way. We might get together perhaps on special occasions. So we might meet up when perhaps it's a, a family wedding or when maybe a, a family member has passed away and we get together at the funeral. But that notion of sort of sharing life and doing life with each other has a very different meaning for children growing up today. So we have loads of questions, really, because of the fact that that doesn't kind of happen naturally in society. It feels less natural when we get together as different age groups, particularly now. And there's a sense, particularly, I think, for children and youth workers, about actually we want to try to perhaps encourage some of this. We don't know how to do it. Uh, we want our children and young people to feel perhaps integrated into the wider life of the church. Uh, there's been a, a heap of research done recently, uh, some of the, the things that have come from um, the Sticky Face sort of project, which are recognising that actually it's really key for our children and young people to feel a sense of belonging to the bigger thing. And so that throws up all kinds of questions and challenges for us. And Peter Stearns has said this, that there are less regular and structured interactions between young and old than ever before. Not only families, but other institutions in modern society have reduced the chance for old and young to share activities in meaningful ways. We have become exceptionally good at separating people in church. We have got it down to a fine art. And uh, I want to kind of, on any one Sunday morning where you are, your context, your setting, how many minutes of that time would be spent with everybody together? And I, in my experience, have found that if it's more than 10 minutes on a Sunday morning, that's actually quite rare now. And so it's kind of not a surprise that it's not always easy. And we're finding, perhaps, as people grow older, as we've got a, a bigger mix of, of generations in church, that actually there is maybe less understanding and uh, kind of less, less love, maybe, being shared between those groups of people. So I wonder if, actually, we've been too good at separating. Um, I wonder if we have done that for too long. And I wonder if the fact that we have a missing generation, missing generations in church now... Uh, who are the 20s and the 30-somethings, if part of that is down to the fact that they struggle to find a place to belong in what we sometimes sort of call, I suppose, adult or grown-up church, in the wider community of church. And when those young people have hit their uh, late teens, early 20s, that the, the church that they find themselves in is not one that they recognise. Um, and that, that means it's difficult to belong. And we need to perhaps think about moving beyond being a multi-generational church to becoming more intergenerational. And there is a distinct difference between those two things. And it's perhaps uh, easiest to explain and define it by thinking about iTunes and when we play music. 
so you can do one of two things. You can put your music on shuffle. I quite like to do this sometimes if I just want some random, bizarre mix of things when I'm commuting. Or you can put it on to repeat. Those are generally your two options. So let's just take the shuffle, for instance. Intergenerational ministry is like the shuffle button. So there's an intersecting of generations that happens. They're not merely in the same room. They've walked across the room to talk to each other. Even that might be significant. They know about each other. They're deeply invested in one another's lives. Intergenerational ministry is where perhaps a young person who's doing exams prays for a senior person in their church because they know that they're about to have an operation. And that senior person knows that they're under stress because they've got these uh, exams happening in their life and they're in the middle of revising. And so when crises happen, those people have some mutual understanding and empathy for each other that really, really helps. Those young people, those older people, and other people in between know that there are people in their church community who will listen to them and who will want to do that very naturally because they are community. Multi-generational ministry, on the other hand, is like the repeat button. There is no intersecting. They exist alongside one another but never have anything to do with one another. They walk around the room but not across it. They sit in the same service, but don't engage, don't talk to one another in it. Nobody knows anything about any other generation, and they don't know about each other's hobbies, each other's passions, or their struggles, or their hurts, or their pain. None of those things in multi-generational church will exist. Peter Menconi has said this, that an intergenerational philosophy differs from a multi-generational one by intentionally involving as many generations as possible in the life and activities of the church. And I really wish there was a better word than intergenerational, partly because it's just such a long word and it takes a lot of effort to say it. But the thing about intergenerational church is it is intentional. It is something we choose, we definitely, we decide to do. We're going to, to do it because we see the value in it. It can sometimes happen by accident, but actually on the whole, we need to proactively seek that out. And I would get you to think about this for, let's, let's just do this question for two minutes. So I wonder where you think your church sits really on this spectrum. If we were to imagine, we're, I, I'm going to wreak havoc now, but I kind of don't care. David, it's going to be a nightmare on the camera, but we're just going to do it anyway. I want you to imagine the intergenerational church where everybody was integrated and uh, everybody kind of knew each other, a bit like I described a minute ago, will be down that far end of the room. A multi-generational church is kind of here where nobody really knows each other, uh, where they don't really talk to one another, and you only really know people from your own generation. I want you to jump up really quickly and go. Imagine there is a line. I want you to stand where you think your church is on that line. And we're going to do it really quickly. Multi-generational here. Nobody knows each other. Nobody talks about that side. Oh, okay, <laughs> feel free. Feel free. Intergenerational. That's it. Yeah, you're different. Someone has just asked if they could go outside. You've been there a generation. You've been there. Okay. So we've got a few people, are you guys kind of not, are you just sort of in the no, middle? Yeah. You're in the middle. We've got some people down the far end, that's amazing. What's it like where you are? Yeah. You're at the intergenerational end. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, so, so tell me something, one thing about where you are that, that tells you that you're intergenerational. We've been trying to plan social events that are sort of family oriented. So over Easter, We've got an Easter Saturday so, yeah. party that is. And these two lovely ladies party. will be leading the rest of the session. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, that sounds great. Anyone else want to tell us about something? Well, perhaps from, from my opinion, I mean, I, I've just recently moved up to Letchworth, and Danny is, is my pastor there. But for the moment you step through the door, there's 
it's such a mix of people, a mix of generations that are greeting you, they're yeah. placed in prominent places, yeah. we have time to meet, we chat, and they've been so welcome, especially the, our older members, they make an effort and come meet you. That's great. I've never had that experience before. So, wow. And in the service, I think, yeah. we have the youngsters praying for the older kids. I love you. <laughs> yeah, we have kids yeah. praying for adults. We have older people coming down to our kids' sessions and praying for our kids and sharing testimonies. And we've just got a management board in place where we've got a lot of younger people. So I think awesome. we're not there. Yeah, we're not there, but we're, we're certainly. That's great. But you're walking in that direction, oh, which yeah. is really yeah. good. That's great. We've got a lot of people, sort of, I think, in the middle that perhaps we feel a little bit we're neither or one or the other. Would that be fair? Anything that people in the middle want to say? I think sometimes we're really good at it and sometimes we're not. So we're not intentional over everything, okay. but on particular events, we're really good at it. But yeah. mm. if we're not planning to be, then we're not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so people may, may come and think, oh, I, this is, a, this is a, a, an intergenerational thing, so I will talk to other yeah. people. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes the older people are not very understanding the young people because they're not the same as the children were when they were young. Yes. And we have real struggles with that in trying to say they're quite hard on the children. And if you try and, um, you try and stand in their corner, sometimes it comes across that you're just, you're just letting them get away with it. When you're actually not, but they don't really understand where the younger generation are coming from. So that's quite our balance. And I, I, uh, it may not help you, but that's not an uncommon thing. <laughs> people seem to encounter that quite a lot, so that's, that's a shame. Down here, down here, some sorry faces, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that are, are, anything you want to say about where you are? They don't feel that um, you have to be... It is just, it's just very different. I think, kind of, um, so, so, you know, I work for the church, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm their youth pastor, and even I don't know about events that are going on with the older ones, I mean, these sort of things happen, and I think like this stuff happens, and actually, communication is not brilliant across the church in general, like, okay, like, okay. Um, across the younger ones, the older ones. So I think sometimes that's a bit of a struggle, and um, yeah, I'd like to see more of it. Actually, okay. I'd like to see more of it. Thank you, and uh, yeah, we, we will we will hold you in our prayers. Thank you. Please take a seat. Take a seat. I've got two minutes. Oh, oh you're no. kidding! Oh, I've oh crumbs. Okay. Um, let's whiz through. I'm just going to crack on. Um, I, I hope that because you came to this session, you recognise that these things are important. That we want to be intergenerational because it's faith forming. We learn from seeing other people's faith in action. It's really helpful uh, when we spend time with people who've perhaps been Christians for a long time and when we're new. Um, it's also because everybody matters. No one in church is any more important than anybody else, and we want to value everybody equally. And also it nurtures that sense of unity. And that's something, I think, that feels more and more in, in, in today's world that is really lacking. You're just going to get a total speed version. Um, international principles, gather together. Um, I, I would say to you, you are probably doing things already that could be intergenerational. It's about looking for the opportunities and the stuff you are already doing. It's about... Uh, encouraging people into you know roles into uh, responsibilities that you already have and helping children young people adults serve with one another all kinds of incredible stuff can happen if we do be intentional about building relationships get get different people or say you know find find somebody who's at least 10 years older or younger than you to talk to about this uh, do it intentionally um, and also uh, think about how that enhances worship when we're all together uh, there is something quite beautiful that happens i believe when god brings people of different ages um whizzing through uh truly intergenerational communities welcome children emerging adults recovering addicts single adults widows single parents teens whose parents are not around the elderly those in crisis empty nesters and struggling parents of young children into a safe but challenging place to be formed into the image of Christ. And that's really, I feel like that's my definition of what church should be, frankly. Uh, if, we're, if we're living the gospel, then we are doing this stuff. Um, I wanted to show you a, a video. If you Google on YouTube, if you go onto YouTube and search for intergenerational quiz, you will hopefully find this. And it's a wonderful example of something that happened in Scotland with the Generations Together project, where they got children and young um, and elderly people together to take part in a quiz. It was a schools thing, but actually it has been really effective in, in enhancing that relationship 
and maybe removing some of that misunderstanding that we already touched on. Some uh, resources, if you are interested, I, I enjoy reading about things. It, it, it kind of develops my thinking. There's a book called Blended by Eleanor Bird. That's a, a great uh, res resource, really, which talks about how when we're separate, we can use that time to learn to be better together. And uh, she talks about how when we do all age things together, it actually, if we just think a bit about our language, we don't have to dumb down, we don't have to make things uh, kiddie friendly, we don't have to do sort of big action games, we just, or songs. If we just think a little bit about those things, we can communicate effectively with everyone. This book, uh, International Christian Formation, I, I would say if you really want to get stuck into some of this, is a really good place to start. It's quite a, a chunky book, but they know their stuff. They have done research. They, they really know all of this really well. In terms of resource, if you want service resources, Roots do an all-age worship thing, which is really helpful based on um, offering liturgy. Um, and Scripture Unions Explore Together, which kind of uses more... Um, learning styles type approach uh, so you would go maybe and do different activities on a theme with different age groups um, but you would all be learning about the same topic with one another um, and that's quite flexible you can adapt it to make it work for wherever you are um, I have whizzed through apologies for that um, but it's been a pleasure to be with you thank you very much The intergenerational quiz has been set up to bring older people and younger people together to question the stereotypes that both groups have of each other and also to, to develop community cohesion and, and, and bring people together in communities. Well, we're involved because we were in it last year and we would like to help out this year again. You know, it's for the young people's benefit as well, so they, um, they get taught how to do more things that are considered to be old-fashioned, like hanging the washing, playing dominoes. It's good because it shows them that we are able to respect them and we are able to like talk to them. Uh, it's very nice to see the young people enjoy the company of the older people. They're very good to us. Most older people think that we're like obsessed with the internet and all that and we don't speak, but we do. Like, all the older people, they're not as boring. They're not boring at all, they're like really fun and they want to learn new things like play on the Wii and stuff. You respect the elderly people more because you learn that they're just as capable to learn how to text type, to learn how to do all the things that we just take for granted. It's a great thing for both generations um, and everyone to do, get to people working together. We didn't have any issues um, trying to have children uh, volunteer to take part, they were all quite keen. We're all one community and we're all one society and we all can help each other. We have all got skills to give. Well, what can I say? I just love the young ones and I love being with them and, and I, I wish them well when they get older because 
I just wish I was brainy as them. I'd just like to say thanks to all, all the old people who um, take their time to come and work with us and have fun. <laughs> oh, we've had a great day. <laughs> <laughs> we always enjoy ourselves when we come. <laughs>